Hello YouTube, I just wanted to take the opportunity to kind of put together a quick tutorial, if you will, on how you can uh, easily add a uh, wideband, fuel pressure, oil pressure, or any gauge you choose to the standard version of HP tuners. And uh, what I mean by the standard version of HP tuners is the cheaper version. Uh, you'll see here we have two versions of HP tuners. Most uh, most of you car guys that are into this stuff probably already know about this, but your cheaper version is about 500 bucks. Your uh, more expensive version, which they call the Pro Package, is 650. Now, in my opinion, in messing with this stuff, I believe if you are a pro, uh, you're running a dyno, you're tuning many cars a day, uh, data logging lots of cars a day. You know, this may be the choice for you, but if you're like me and you've got a couple of vehicles of your own that you, you uh, tune and you data log, or you just got a few friends that, you know, may need the occasional tune, this, this software here in this hardware package is plenty more than what you need. Uh, what I'd like to do is kind of show you how, you know, I know most people, their primary concern when looking at these packages is they're afraid that without the pro package that they can't data log inputs which is not true you can uh, and you can easily uh, you can probably program at least at least three three inputs using this cheaper version of HP tuners whether it's your wideband your fuel pressure your oil pressure just anything that has a zero to five volt output you can log it so just want to kind of show you how I did that uh, now this information is out there I know it's nothing new there's uh, lots of guys who have done this <clears throat> but when I was going through the process of doing it, I first thing I realized is that there's a broad range of information out there on how to do it and it's just all over the place you know a lot of times you'll see stuff on forums and uh, the information doesn't transpose very well because of you know the reason it's in text or some people just don't like sharing that information but uh, I'm not that way and I and, and, uh, hope you're not either but regardless this is how I did it and uh, I hope it helps somebody out so what you want to do is originally buy this standard package uh, if you think that fits your criteria go for it you buy the standard package and you're going to want to buy a uh, wideband now the thing about it is that uh, really got me to go this route is the price difference you're looking at about a hundred fifty dollar price difference between pro and the standard package so looking at the gauges and the gauges that I wanted I wanted for sure a wideband and for sure a fuel pressure gauge well your wideband itself is going to cost you about a hundred fifty dollars so with the savings you get just going with this cheaper package you, you can buy yourself a wideband I think that's a that's a pretty bang up deal. Most of us are on a budget. Uh, we we watch our money, you know, pretty tight. And and whenever you can save money, you should do it. Uh, you know, you're, you're, the hobby of hot rodding, <laughs> endless funds will will not get you too very far. So so anyways, you uh, this gauge here it has a five volt output that you can connect to HP tuners. Uh, the pro version you would just connect it into the side of the unit and it would give out a 5 volt signal and the unit would tell you what your readings are you know now on the standard version what you're going to do is you're going to connect that 5 volt output to as far as I know there may be more but the ones I know of your EGR sensor input your fuel <coughs> tank pressure input are your air conditioning pressure input these three inputs are zero to five volt inputs that you can access from HP tuners through your PCM now me I use a uh, 0411 that's uh, a PO1 uh, PCM and I use my EGR input because like most hot rods or, or uh, most modified engines uh, EGR is usually the first thing to go so you have a you know chances are you have an empty input there that you can use to send the signal through. so 
So what you'll want to do is establish on your PCM where that input is. Whether you use the wiring that is from your EGR valve, for example, or whatever sensor, or you figure out the pin number for that uh, that sensor. It's, it's going to be a pin number. It's actually on the, the, uh, the large pigtail that goes to your PCM. So once you have that figured out and you have the output wire going from your gauge into the input wire going into your PCM, what you're want to, going to want to do is connect your or set up your scanner. And uh, how you do that is initially you're going to have to set you're going to have to add a channel. And you add the channel, you press here you go on this area here, add channel. And the easiest way to find it, you're looking for whatever. Uh, whatever sensor route you decided to go, in my case EGR, put in the search up top EGR. And you'll see underneath here under gas recirculation you have EGR. Double click it, that channel is now added to this list of channels that you're going to scan in data log. So once that's done, the, the best way to do it next is to go ahead and go to your tools, math perimeters, and you're going to add a custom math, okay? Now what the custom math does is it takes, let me just move this over a little bit, you know, uh, let me let me stop right there and I'll come back to it and just kind of let you walk, let you watch how this, this works. Okay, I'm going to go to a log file, recent logs, and that's a, this is some data I pulled the, the other day, and press play and you'll see here under EGR sensor this voltage is, is moving up and down. So this is taking a reading from my gauge, from the output of the gauge, and the gauge is telling, you know, the PCM it's putting out this voltage. Uh, PCM doesn't know no better, it thinks it's EGR, which it's not. So it's putting out this voltage, and then this voltage is interpolated by the software to put out this reading on the wideband, okay? Engine's cold right there. It's running a little, a little uh, lean, but it, it it fluctuates. So the 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 how the software interpolates this reading from your zero to five volts is 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 based off of a math that you input into the software, and this is how you do that. You go to tools, okay, math perimeters, and you're going to input this information that I have here. Okay, now what we're looking at here is a, an, as a math parameter. It's a calculation, more or less, that um, HP Tuner uses to calculate. Huh. So you want to name it, name it whatever you want. I have mine named AEM Wideband. And then notes, uh, just wideband through the EGR. And this is the most important part. This is a formula. What this formula does is tells uh, tells the scanner what you're using. In this case, I'm using the 2811 EGR sensor. You put it in these brackets, 2811 EGR sensor. And then this is the math it uses to figure out what the voltage reading is and transpose it into what it's reading on that gauge. So in other words, this, uh, let's see here, this 1.49 volts equals 12.8 on your AFR. And it knows that by taking this math and converting it. Okay. Now, the thing to remember is, in this math, this uh, plus 9.8 right here, this is how you can fine tune it. Uh, unless you're just lucky or, or uh, maybe your gauge is just spot on with, with how their scanner works, chances are it's gonna be a little bit wrong. So what you do is you go into these numbers right here and you change it to better match the uh, what the gauge is outputting. And the way I do that, As I lay my laptop as close to my my gauge console as possible, and and watch the two as they work together, 
In other words, I'll uh, watch my physical gauge that's in the truck and see how it reads out in comparison to the the uh, scanner gauge. And I'll adjust these numbers until it's as close as possible. Now, I, I don't think you can get it spot on 100%, but you can get it pretty close. Uh, if, if your gauge is reading high or low, change your point number to uh, just whatever, which, whichever way you feel like it should go and see if it fixes it. And I'm thinking I can actually put another point in there, but I'm not 100% sure. We'll say, not a point, but say like a, if, if 8 is too low and 90 is too high, try 9.85. Uh, just, just have to play with it until you figure out for sure. Uh, what's the what number gets you the closest you can go and this one I have here is, is pretty darn close for my application I have a feeling that all the gauges need calibrated so chances are yours is going to be different than mine or it may be close you maybe just give you a good starting point uh, either way play with those two numbers right there 9.8 uh, and, and uh, adjust it and calibrate it to your liking okay now that the math is set up, <clears throat> the last thing to do is to actually uh, is set up a gauge. Now, you can set up a gauge or you can set up a chart. Most of the time, you're going to want to do both. Uh, I like to use the gauge when I'm actually driving around and uh, collecting my data uh, simply because I can have this on my laptop opened up and sitting on the seat beside me look over and, and you know get this information pretty easy versus looking at this chart which as you look at it and it's a little bit you know it could be a little bit the the taking at one time and these gauges are more it's a lot more familiar to look at than it is that chart system it looks like the dash of a car basically so as I'm driving I'll use these gauges so first I'm going to set up an actual gauge for the wideband and just kind of go through the beginning you know you have your EGR sensor it reads voltage you did your your math and now you're going to set up a gauge so what you'll do is you'll go to your gauge layout add a new gauge add round that's what you want and since I already have a wideband gauge set up I'm just going to name this one example you're going to want to set these perimeters to however you like uh, in my case the max is 20 the minimum is 0 major ticks I will have set at 7 and factor I'll leave it 1 minor ticks I believe I have set at 5 let's see yes and for the ellipse 135 and 70 okay no, is that correct 135 270 there you go that's better 270 okay now not quite done but we'll look at it okay X that out there's our new gauge it, you know you have to with HP tuners, you got to reposition this thing. It just kind of throws the gauge wherever it feels like, and then uh, you can position it wherever you want. Uh, you have to kind of play with that and see how to do it. But uh, as I press play, you notice the gauge doesn't work. There's not even a dial for it. Well, that's because I left out the most important part. So I'll press pause, go back to the gauge layout, go to our new gauge we just created, and this is the most important part is the perimeter. Okay, this is where that math that you created comes into play. So you click to insert or change, scroll down, maps. You want to go to user defined because it's the one you created. In my case, mine is named AEM Wideband. Double click on it, it changes the perimeter to the AEM Wideband. Uh, it says I have it, it says here pounds per second. I don't think that matters. That's just a uh, that's just uh, whatever you want to set it to like if if you're inch pounds or uh, PSI or boost or just or just whatever uh, pounds per hour pounds a minute just just whatever you want it to mean uh, to, to label the gauge in this case you're just looking for numbers so it doesn't matter so another thing I want to put two decimals here 
because I want to read the 14.70, for example, or uh, 11.50, for example. So you want to have two decimals. So let's close that out. Now we have our gauge, and we press play on the scanner, and boom, there's our wideband. Uh, and you notice I have the max set at zero, and the or the excuse me, the minimum set at zero, and the max set at one. That needs to be changed. So go to gauge layout. And example, max should be 20. Minimum should be zero. I don't know why they didn't. That just didn't stick a while ago for some reason. But anyway, there we go. And there's our wideband. Use it to scan with. Uh, set your idle. Set your tune. I mean, there's the safest. It's the safest way to tune a vehicle, in my opinion. Uh, I mean, I'm going to go ahead and take this gauge off because it's the exact same gauge as, as what I already have. So I'll take it off. And here you go. And for example, this is, this is more or less, I believe, the vehicle cruising. You can see that, you know, normal cruise, you're going to probably want around 14.6, 14.7. And I don't quite have that right here. So I know that in that area, I might need to lean it out a little bit. Now what's most important is in, when you're getting in areas of, of say boost, okay, this vehicle is about to go into boost right there. And boom, 8.73 pounds of boost and we're at 10.9 at the AFR, which is it's safe, you know, not perfect, but safe. And that is the primarily reason, primary reason, why you want to have a uh, AFR gauge in your vehicle, and that's how you can do it without purchasing the Pro HP tuners, standard HP tuners. Easy does it. Like I said, uh, you could also use your AC pressure sensor or your fuel tank pressure sensor. And do the same thing. I'll be adding a, an actual fuel pressure gauge to mine. It's another AEM gauge. Uh, I've got the gauge in my truck. I just need to add the output so that I can watch my fuel pressure and, and data log it too. So, you know, hopefully that helps somebody out. And uh, if you got any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, any suggestions, absolutely leave them. I'm learning myself. I most definitely don't know everything there is to know about this. Um, I'm learning as I go and any help that you can provide would be great and hopefully I can do the same in return So once again, uh, thanks guys uh, Please feel free to like the video subscribe if you want I uh, plan on making more videos of uh, actually Gonna make a video on how to set up this boost gauge. Uh, I know I like a lot of guys kind of uh, Don't seem to use it which I think is very helpful in the tuning process and another is uh, a torque uh, gauge to where you can calculate horsepower uh, uh, not 100 percent accurate obviously but you can still pick up horsepower increases using the uh, using it but uh, those will be in future videos and, and until then uh, stay safe and happy hot riding